Another really annoying top handle, and it's gotta be the Valentino. Do you know I can't give this bag away? We realistically will give you 350 pounds for that because Valentino doesn't sell. Can you see from what I'm talking about here? It does that because it's nearly 2,000 pounds and I, I'm, I don't think it's worth that much. And also, right now at least, the price of this versus the classic flaps isn't, it's a lot, but it isn't crazy, you know, 5,000 pounds plus. Hey everyone, top handle bags. They, so obviously with bags, you've got top handle and you've got crossbody and everything in between backpacks. And I would say that I'm probably more drawn towards top handle bags. I just feel like they suit my style more. And out of the bags that I've got, some I don't use because they are so annoying. And I, I bought them and it's not until you take the tags off and you start using it and you've gone past the point where you can actually return it. That's normally the point for me where I discover whether something is working for me or not. So here are some of the most popular bags out there right now that are the most frustrating and annoying bags to use top handle. And if you're thinking of buying any, these are all just my opinions and my experiences. Some of the things I'm telling you about here might not be a problem for you. And I always say in the videos, they're only sort of like me chatting through things. You've got to go with what it is that you actually want to buy at the end of the day. The first most annoying bag is the Lady Dior, but not in the medium size. And I'm going to come on to the medium size in a moment because the medium size, I feel, if you're looking to get the Lady Dior, is a, it's like a perfect all-rounder. The problem with the mini, and even the problem if you use it in, as an evening bag, is it's not tall enough to, to fit the average phone. So when you use it, and I, it's not just me, I've seen other people do this, you can't close the flap on it. So when you use it, it's essentially open with all of your stuff showing. It makes it really frustrating, although it's a really cute bag. And it's weird, I'm glad that I bought it because I love it and I've been thinking of it for a long time. You know, I bought this a couple of years ago now, 2020, but I've, I've been really surprised that I haven't actually worn it that much. The next most annoying bag to work with, and it's also from Dior, it just happens to be at least, it's the Dior saddle bag. This bag is quite frustrating because of the quirky and unique shape of it. And you could also argue that this is more of a shoulder bag, and it kind of is, but I'm including it as a top handle because it is that design where you, you can use it as a top handle and you might even wear it like that. I've seen a lot of people wear it like that in the crook of their arm. This is a frustrating bag because of that shape. Not much fits in it. In this bit that goes down here, you can kind of fit, obviously, as you can see, more makeup. Once you've put a large phone in this, there's not loads more space left. Do I use it though? Yeah, I do actually. I always said that this was a bag I'd never buy and I ended up buying it, I think it must have been 2019. And the reason why I bought it is it came out in this, which is the Oblique in denim, as you can see there. And it's such a unique design and colorway that that's really what caught my eye on this. But I would definitely say if you're thinking about this bag, I personally do think it's a trend. I love how they look. Whenever I see people carrying them, particularly in the plain leather, I'm like, oh my God, that looks so good. But it's annoying to use and I don't think, I don't think these are gonna be around forever. I think once Maria Grazia Churi, if and when she ever leaves Dior, I, I, I'm gonna guess this is going to go with her because this has been resurrected from the, like the year 2000s. Let's mix it in with some that are actually really good top handles. And when I was picking the best top handles for me, I noticed there was one uh, common theme that went between them all, which is that they are convertible into crossbody bags. I prefer a crossbody bag to a shoulder bag because I find shoulder bags slip off, it, except for the saddle bag because it's so small and that shoulder bit's like quite short and it doesn't go anywhere. But the Chanel Trendy, I said a couple of years ago, if you only want to buy one bag, if you're into Chanel of course, I think that this is a perfect bag to go with. It's classic, it seems to work with so many different outfits. Even if you're someone who, like I tend to wear more sneakers and more sporty kind of clothes, but it still works. And also you can fit water in it. 
it's got loads of space on the inside. But the thing I like about it, it's got a crossbody strap that you can't really see when you're carrying it. But if you do that, there you have it. So you can wear it on your shoulder or crossbody. It's sort of really nice drop length. So this to me is the perfect one-off bag. Problem is they're not cheap. I bought mine probably four or five years, four years ago, and it was expensive then. Dread to think how much it is now. I think it was around about 4,000 when I bought it. But if you can get one of these pre-loved, or if you are saving and you're like, that's the bag for me, I highly recommend this. Another really annoying top handle, and it's gotta be the Valentino. Do you know I can't give this bag away? I was going to uh, sell it to Luxury Promise, you know, the consignment store. And for any of you watching, actually, if you're thinking about selling to a consignment store where, where you live, or I think it's really common to only really be offered about 50 or 60% of what they think they're going to be sold it to. I, I had one of you a couple of weeks ago email me and say, I've been offered like 50%. I mean, not much for this bag you wanted to sell. And I think that's really normal. And when I, when I was going to sell this, even though it's new and it was, it's like 1800 pounds, Luxury Promise said, we realistically will give you 350 pounds for that because Valentino doesn't sell. A, a lot of people, when it comes to pre-loved especially, they're not interested in it. And I could well believe it. It's a shame because the leather on it's really beautiful. It's really soft. But I find it to be a frustrating bag to use. The chain handle you can actually take off because it's quite uh, clunky. It's actually quite heavy. But just in terms of how it looks, incidentally, with that Fendigraphy bag, a couple of videos ago, Farfetch gave me a coupon code which gets you money off. And I bought, I'm going to link to that bag below because that bag, if you go into a boutique, is 1850 If you buy it on Farfetch, for a weird reason, and I think the price is wrong, it's 1650 That price is definitely not correct because that's a saving of like £200 or something. And I I'm, I'm will link to it below because if you've been thinking of that bag, that's how much it is right now on there. The coupon code doesn't actually work on Fendi, it works on pretty much everything else though. So I always say, you've got to create a new account. Create a new account, add loads of stuff to your basket, even if you're not intending on buying most of it, and see what the code works on. But that Fendi bag, you don't even need a discount code for that Fendi bag. The discount is already there. And I'm, I'm just waiting, that's why I bought mine. I'm waiting for them to notice that price is wrong and for someone to change it. On to the next really good top handle bag though, and it's the college bag from Saleron. I actually bought it for £1,100 because I used a Farfetch coupon code at the end of 2020. So glad I did it. This is another really good bag because it converts into a shoulder bag and a crossbody bag, and you can remove that chain. So if you don't want to wear it on there, you can just totally take it off. The bag fits loads. It's got a rear uh, pocket in the back of it. I think it's really classic. I think it's really timeless. It's actually, like, as I said, you can fit a lot inside of it. And I think if you're going to get this, either get it in the black or the cream, although obviously if you get the cream, you're gonna have issues with dye transfer. That's why I personally went for the black. And this, I can't fault this bag. I don't know how much it is now, but I would imagine that compared to similar bags on the market from other places, I think that this is gonna be a lot less and I would recommend this bag. Okay, the next one. I've spoken about this next one so many times and if you love it, get it. But if you love it, but you have seen what I've said about it and you don't think it's something you can live with, then honestly, don't get it because it's nearly 2000 pounds and i i'm uh, i don't think it's worth that much it's the it's like the bottega jody bag i know i can hear loads of you saying not that again but it's true i couldn't not include it as a top handle bag it's really frustrating i love the look of it i love that kind of croissant shaped bag love the look of that but this has really disappointed me because as I say, it wasn't really until I took off all of the labels 
and wore it on an evening out. That was the point where I realised how frustrating and impractical this bag is. And the reason for it is the zip opening and closing or closure. It is, it's really, really hard to open and close. It, and in fact, when, I'm trying to open it now. And in fact, when I went to use it, because of that on an evening out, I didn't even bother, oh, it's a joke. I didn't even bother zipping it closed again because whenever I wanted to get my stuff out, I'm not gonna do that. So then I'm leaving it open and things are spilling out of it. I think it's a gorgeous bag, I love it, but do I use it? Not really. This is another fantastic bag as a crossbody, forget it. As a crossbody, it is completely, it does come with, with this strap. And you know, I will say, it's not been designed to be a crossbody, to be fair to it. It's been designed to be a top handle or a shoulder bag, but, if you're someone who, when you go out, you get annoyed and you want to be able to wear it crossbody, this is this is how it's going to look. If I show you here, it's okay, but the problem is the bag twists, and over time, I actually have it with my uh, blue version of this that I bought in 2016. Over time the twisting of the bag actually alters the shape of it. it um, can you see from what I'm talking about here? It does that. But as a top handle, brilliant. Fits water, fits all the stuff you need, looks really classic. If you're going to get it, I would say to get it in the black lambskin. I just think that goes with everything. This is a, an old version of the Lady Dior from a couple of years ago and it's called the Supple, Lady Dior Supple. They don't do it anymore. Uh, but yeah, I would say go for the classic lambskin. And then finally, the best top handle is the Business Affinity from Chanel. This little bag is so cute. It fits more than you'd imagine. What I like is that on the sides of it, I'll show you. You can see it's got these little poppers here and you can expand the bag and wear it kind of more like that. Or you can close them up and have it uh, a tighter fit. It has got a chain handle that's non-removable, but when you wear it, that to me is a perfect drop length. And also, right now at least, the price of this versus the classic flaps isn't, it's a lot, but it isn't crazy, you know, £5,000 plus. I bought this for £3,250 or £3,400 or something. It, it was under three and a half thousand and for the for what you get and for the fact it's Chanel I thought that was quite good um, and also I checked for things like the flap is straight on it and all of the stitching lines up I got a good one here um, so they are the best and the worst top handle bags and some of them here are really really annoying to me, but they might not be to you. You might watch this and go, actually, I can live with that. That's not too bad. So definitely listen to your gut. If there is a bag that you're thinking of, don't ask anyone else what they think because you will always get a different answer. Ask yourself, what do you like? What is it that you really want? And go ahead and get that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.